Dance Tour here with Michelle Millwood, four-time champion, and first year with the Syracuse Silver Knights. We're through the first ten games, so at the halfway point here. And what can you say about what you've seen in, in the first half of the season from the Knights with this being your first season? Uh, great improvement. Uh, right now we have a winning record. Uh, based on the season right now, we're, we're set or we could say we're in a playoff, playoff position, and we just have to maintain that for the next ten games. To be in a position where it's more about maintaining and maybe incre- you know, putting yourself up a little bit higher, what can you say about a team that at the halfway point is in a position to maintain and not try to make the playoffs? What can you say about the environment that that might create? Well, uh, I would say you just have to be focused. You, know, you, you still have to be focused. Uh, the, the season Thank never you. does go down to the last game. Uh, if we, if we let now, now, or if we're not as focused, or we're not working as hard as we've been doing for the last ten games, then we're setting ourselves up for failure. So we just have to come in every day, continue to work hard, and know that at the end of the day we're working to, to get to that playoff spot. Now you obviously have a lot of history with Baltimore. The Knights haven't played Baltimore yet. We're playing four times in the last ten games. What can you say about having almost half of the games against Baltimore coming up, and, and what to expect from that? Uh, it's going to be a battle. Uh, they're they're always a full structured team. Uh, they keep the core guys on that team, and, 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 and they're always put themselves in a position to win championships. So it's one of those things where every game is going to be a battle. They're not going to let down, and and us being in the position to make the playoffs and, and trying to get one of the top seeds, we have to go in every game with the same mentality. It doesn't matter if it's a if it's a Baltimore or it's a St. Louis or it's a it's a Pennsylvania team. You know, we have to go in with the same winning mentality and hopefully uh, try to get a result from every game. Six of the last ten at home for the Syracuse Silver Knights. What can that do when you have the second half of the season where you're spending the majority of the time in front of your own fans? Oh, it's great. Uh, we have great fans here. Uh, they, 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 they like coming out to the games. Uh, there's nothing better than a home game. You feel at home, you're not traveling, you know, uh, you're setting your routines. Um, everything just becomes more of a structure as far as your daily regiments getting up, what you have to do to get prepared for the game. So it's always good to have home games, and it's always good to get prepared mentally and physically for home games. I just think you get a better vibe from having games at home. What can you say to having home games here as opposed to having them when you had them in Baltimore? How similar, different is it? Because obviously they're bringing in around 8,000 people to a game. What can you say about how that feels compared to how this feels? Um, I mean, that was, I mean, I guess it's just a difference in the environment. I mean, obviously, you're averaging eight, sometimes 14,000 people a game, and then coming here where you might have three, maybe 4,000 people. I mean, it's a lot different, but the fans here, they make up for it. You know, uh, they're cheering for us from the minute we step on the field to, to, to the minute we walk off the field. And even off the field at the end of the game, they're still cheering. You know, and we can always just come out and, and give them everything we have. You know, we, we owe it to them, we owe it to the city of Syracuse to come out and work that hard in every game. And and we have to build our own vibe and our own environment. You know, uh, coming from Baltimore and coming here, I mean, once that whistle blows, it's not about everything else that's around, but it's about my teammates, the game, my opponents, and trying to get a win. How did Baltimore grow that fan base? Is it something that took time as far as getting the people there? Yeah, it takes a lot of time. Uh, it takes a lot of work in the community. As I come in, I see Syracuse is doing a good job with that now. You know, and, 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 and once you build a loyal fan base, it'll always be loyal. You know, it's not one of those things that you, you, you get some fans here today and then they won't show up again. You know, uh, when you build that fan base and it's consistent and you start winning games and you start getting into the playoffs and now you're pushing for championships, that's what every fan wants to see. You know, a, a real fan will embrace a losing team, you know, but a real fan would be more excited and even more embrace a winning team. You know, there's nothing like winning, there's nothing like championships. So, I mean, I guess as we win and as we get better here, you know, we could probably see more people coming out to our games and see more people in the community embracing us as we as well go out there and embrace the people in our community. You were talking about leadership with me many times that we've talked after games, and at this practice, you had some words for the team, stop the game and talk to them about what needs to be done to make it better. And, and you had made the statement, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just telling you the right way to do it, but you're going to choose what you want to do. Go into a statement like that and really what you're trying to get out of the guys. Well, I just want them to know that there's, there's, there's a way to play the game. There's a correct way to play the indoor game. And, and, and my way is not going to be the right way and their way is not going to be the right way. But at the end of the day, if we're on the same page, good things will happen. You know, and if uh, and if guys want to get out here and do their own thing, then 
more than likely bad things are going to happen. You know, so there's just some fundamentals of the indoor game that I'm trying to bring to the table with these guys, and I feel as though we, we have everything else. You know, uh, they, they they like that indoor specific um, tutoring or, or knowledge, I would say. And, you know, and me being a part of the game for so long, I've picked up stuff along the way that I feel, feel as though I could teach to them. You know, so I mean, at the end of my career, all I want to do is make sure when I leave this game, you know, I'm passing it on in the right hands, and I'm passing it on to guys by showing them some of the better ways to play the game to get good results. Another thing you had said is that it's not about the quantity of touches, but what you do with them. And I just wanted to go a little bit further on that with you, that you had stopped play to talk to the guys about, it's not about how many times you're going to touch the ball, but where I give it to you, how I give it to you, what you do with it. I mean, that's very important on the field. I mean, a lot of guys come in and they feel as though if they're not touching the ball 500 times, they're not doing something on the field. You know, uh, guys might come in and feel as though if they don't score today, uh, they didn't do a good job, you know, and they have to understand that you play both sides of the field. You know, you don't just come on and because you're touching the ball, that doesn't mean that you're doing good things on the ball. You know, if you put yourself in the right position to help your teammates and to put yourself in good position to score goals, get assists, be on the defensive side of the ball, then you're helping your teammates and then you're helping your team win. So it's all about your productivity. It's not about your personal gain or your personal feelings. It's about winning and winning as a team. How do you feel this team is playing as a team? I mean, there's seven wins in the first ten games, but do you feel that this is truly a team atmosphere where you are fighting for your brother right now? Yeah, I think we're getting better. You know, I think we're getting better. I think uh, as, as we come along, uh, there are guys that were on the, first, the same page from, from day on, and I, and I think as guys are buying into it, we're playing better as a team. Uh, from You can see from the last game, it wasn't a great offensive output. You know, uh, we were probably shut out the first half of the game. You know, but after going into the locker room and, and buckling down and, and guys working on, on our differences, we, we, we had a better output in the second half. You know, and, and even though it wasn't pretty, we came out winning. And that's just the right way to show how we're growing as a team. You know, to know that we can have a bad half, come out the second half, bond together, and come out with a win. Your leadership along with Tommy Tanners, what can you say about how you both work together to really get the message across? It's great. You know, um, as I told Tom before, I'm just here to help. You know, whatever aspect he feels as though I can help out, you know, that's what I'm willing to do. You know, and as I tell the guys every day, I'm not here to take away anything from your game or what you have to offer. You know, I'm just here to make sure that you're growing within yourself, within the game, and I can help you at any point at all. Feel free to ask me questions. You know, as much as I'm here and I'm telling you guys stuff, I'm watching, and I'm also learning one or two things from you guys. You know, uh, it's always a learning process. You know, I'm not just a leader or a teacher. You know what I mean? I can learn from you as much as you can learn from me. And I think Tommy has done a great job in, 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 in bringing core guys or, or giving uh, the older guys a little bit more responsibility. And now we're pushing the younger guys and we're letting them know that it comes with building that confidence. And then as we go along, you guys too will be leaders on the team, not just every day the older guys, but we're going to need you guys to step up and play well as well, play good as well. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you.